welcome back. Thanks again for joining us as we continue with our elections coverage from Mbumalanga. And now we're taking a bit of a different angle now, still politically related or politic, uh, political, uh, what can I say, focus on it. But we're taking a look at something different from the lens now, on the other side of the lens, as far as pictures are concerned. The name Sam Nzima should ring a bell for you. Uh, he's probably one of the most popular jewels to have come from this particular part of South Africa in Bumalanga. Uh, if you don't remember him, that picture, 1976, June uprisings in Soweto, you know the one of Hector Peterson in the arms of uh, Mbui Samakubo and uh, uh, his sister walking beside him, screaming, crying, weeping. You'll remember that picture very, very fondly. This is the man who took uh, uh, that photograph. Mr. Sam Nzima joins us now just to discuss uh, the events of that day and also some of the issues plaguing Mbumalanga today. Very good morning to you, Baba. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning to you, Red, and, and listeners. You probably get this question asked all the time, but what was it like on that day? Tell us about the sights, about the sounds. There you were, probably uh, afraid for your own life at that time, but you were able to take that iconic picture that rings true even till today. Yes, yeah, as a journalist, you are commissioned to do everything to expose the community. People would like to know what's happening. As a journalist, I was committed. On June 16, 1976, I was one of the journalists who, who went to uh, cover the march by the student from Naledi High School. But I was given that assignment to go and cover the march. I was with Sophie Tima and myself, then the driver, Thomas Koza. Went to Naledi High School, we found that uh, the students were busy preparing the placards that are away with Africans and Africans must be abolished and so on. And some, they, one, one of the interesting uh, part of the placard was that we are being fed by the crumbs of education. We are being certificated but not educated. But now, then, the match started from there. When they go on and on, at the Orlando High School, Matsipe, Matsike High School, Orlando West is Vialaka Street, there comes the police. When they arrived there, the police in charge, who was commanding the crew of the police, told the student to disperse. The students start to sing Kosisikelela Africa, a song which was banned in South Africa. When the ANC and the other political party were banned in South Africa, that song was no more allowed to be sung in South Africa. But that day, the students sang that song. And I think that's the one that provoked the policemen to start to shoot because the commander now, when they start singing that song, he ordered the, the police that, shoot, the hell was loose. The shooting was not in order. Every policeman was just shooting at random. So many students were shot, but the first victim was Hector Peterson. I saw Hector Peterson fell down in the crowd of the student. I went there with my camera. Mbuiso Makubo picked him up and they started running for help. The nearest car was the press car that we had a Volkswagen. And indeed, Sophie Tima opened the doors for them to get Hector Peterson into the car. When they arrived at a clinic, the doctor certified Hector Peterson dead on arrival. So Soweto was on fire. Everything was on fire. The, 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 the riot of the, Soweto, the June 16 uprise engulfed all of the whole of Soweto up to the east end, west end, everything was just happening that way. That, that picture went on to be printed on the 17th of June. All the UK newspapers were carrying that picture of Hector Peterson. Everybody realized that this picture is the best. But there was, there was a big debate in the world newspaper that they should use the picture or not. And the, then the, the chief editor said that now, if we, if we use this picture, we are going to spark civil war in South Africa. Let us not use this picture, it's too dangerous. Then the, Percy Cobo, the late Percy Koboza, the editor of the world newspaper, he said, no, we must use it. And it was used. A special uh, extra late newspaper in the afternoon was produced because uh, they wanted to use that picture. The picture was used in the afternoon extra late, and the following day all the newspapers were uh, requesting to use that paper. UK used that picture. They, on the 18th, then USA, they were using that picture. All over the world, the picture circulated. Then after that, the police from John Foster phoned me that I must come in and have an interview with them. Then when he phoned to, to, to the world newspaper, he wanted to speak to Sam Zima. Then they called me to the phone. I went to the phone. He said, Manier Zima, can it be so because police has come and on my car coffee drink? Then I went to, I told PC, I have received an invitation from the station commander from John Foster Square. He wants to come and share a cup of coffee with me. Then Percy Kovoda said, don't go there. If you go there, you're going to come back being a corpse. There's an interrogation chamber at the 10th floor of the John Foster Square. Don't go there. 
Then Paul uh, Pesci picked up the phone and phoned the session commander. The session commander said, no, I just want to see Sam and we have a cup of tea together. Pesci said, no, if you want to know anything about this newspaper, The World, I'm the editor of The World, call me, I'll come there. Then he said, look, we are trying to reform here in South Africa. Here is your man, Sam Zima. He's exposing South Africa. He, says, he sold the picture to the communist country, Russia. Then Pesci said, if that is the case, no, lay off your hands from Sam Zima. We are the member of UPI, United Press International. That picture was circulated, it was sold to the UPI. Then the UPI circulated the picture all over the world. The Russian people bought it. So did you end up going, though, to, to, to have coffee? No, I, I did not go there. It's then Pesci phoned the session command that Sam is not coming there. If you want to know anything about the world newspaper, please call me. I'm the editor of the paper. So I didn't go there. Then the police had their, their police conference there, and then the session commander gave them instructions that they must go and arrest me at 3 a.m. in the morning. Fortunately, I, was, there were, I had a friend of a policeman at John Foster Square. He phoned me and said, don't sleep at home. We are coming to pick you up by 3 a.m. in the morning. And indeed, I didn't sleep at home. I slept at a radio port my friend, uh, Absalom Nisi. He was my colleague at the World Newspaper. Then, at night, they went there. They ransacked the house. My wife was not there. She was at, uh, at work. She was a sister at Baragwanath Hospital. So they ransacked my house. They didn't get me. And then they went back. They were given instruction that wherever you find Sam Zima taking the picture, don't arrest him, shoot him. Then you come and fill the form that it was a stray bullet shot Sam Zima. So the same police phoned me. He told me that uh, no more going out. If you go out, we, we are given instructions that we must kill you. That is the thing that made me to leave Johannesburg and come here at Bush Park Ridge, where I am now. Wow. So under the guise of having a cup of coffee, your life was on the line. You couldn't separate your profession, being a photographer, from the politics of the time. You continue right now to uh, take a look at South Africa through your lenses. 20 years on, what do you think of our country? Photography is in my blood. I cannot uh, separate with it. Well, even if anything comes to me, when I wake up in the morning, I'm, I'm thinking of the camera. Camera is the thing that I'm enjoying it when holding it. When I was here at home, the police followed me until they got the place where I was hiding at here at Bushpark Ridge. Then they came, they imposed the house arrest. I was in the house arrest about a year and six months in the house arrest. I was not allowed to mix with the people. Then they told me that we are being structured that we must arrest you and take you to jail. But fortunately, now we think that we must just give you a house arrest, impose house arrest on you. Don't move out, don't mix with the students. You must stay put. You are not allowed to do anything anymore here in this country because you made a, a lot of noise. Uh, yes. And, and in this current dispensation, I think someone can see you. That's why the phone is ringing. Oh, Babunzi, my name is TV. As it is being a little so good to write. But let's continue with our conversation now. Uh, just taking a look at, at South Africa, where it is today. You're able to move around freely. You're able to take pictures wherever, however you want to take uh, take the pictures and not face house arrest for it. Uh, are, you, are you happy with the strides that have been made in the country? Definitely. I'm very happy. You know, the ANC made the freedom for all the people in the country. And in that picture also, it was a turning point. There was no other march bigger than the one of June 16, 1976. After that big march, it was a freedom. ANC was unbanned and other political parties were also unbanned. Today we are free because of that. It's a big contribution that I think we as journalists have made in the struggle for freedom. Thank you so much, Babun Zima. I appreciate your time. I mean, I'm just imagining being arrested for doing my job. Yeah. These are the freedoms that we enjoy in South Africa, and we don't speak often about it. I mean, you would not have ever seen a black face such as mine on television, I don't think. <laughs> not in prime time, definitely not in, in, in the platforms that we're enjoying now. So it's the, because of the work that you did, Babun Zima, and people like you in the profession who make it easy for Abo Ayanda and whoever else is on television to do what we do. We are so appreciative of your work, and we do indeed. Thank Thank you so much for your time. Thank All you. right, now on that emotional note for me, let me hand you back into.